Alright YouTubers, welcome back to Small Engine Velocity. Today, uh, we will be attempting, or we should be able to complete, um, a uh, valve lash uh, gap uh, adjustment, or a valve adjustment for uh, my Lafon KP Mini. Uh, my symptoms were, uh, I was getting a lot of uh, clicking, and then I think my intake is a little bit too snug so in when it's cold or when I'm starting it it, it has a tendency to die um, you can even hear it when you're running it's like like every once in a while it's a little bit too snug as it warms up it gets better uh, with anything because uh, the, the clearance but uh, let's go ahead and give it a shot now the first thing we did obviously is to remove all the plastics uh, the side, the fairing, the tank cover, the seat, went ahead and removed all of that. Um, then the next thing I need to do, obviously, see if you look here, um, there's no access to the valve, so we're going to try to take off the, uh, the valve cover up here, so it means I need to take the tank off, and then this out of the way and this out of the way and hopefully I'll have enough clearance to get access to these two believe it or not bolts to take this off and then uh, check underneath there now to take the tank off I'm already assuming that everyone knows how to take the fairings off um, it's very simple you can just explore with a uh, an allen wrench and a, a 10 millimeter and a flathead and you should be able to get all of them off now, to take the tank off, there's just one bolt here, and then if you look inside, there's these two rubber grommets that have a C thing that's right there. I don't know if you can see it with this. And when you take the back bolt off, these C's, if you can see that, just clip onto this. I guess it's for a, kind of a shocks. Yeah, for shock for the tank so it's not vibrating or anything which is a good idea um, now as we work on this I've come to realize how small this tank is I mean who puts 1.4 gallon tank anyways that's beside the point we're gonna do a valve job today so if you look here everything is exposed now there is a crank right here uh, this is where we would put the 19 millimeter six-sided socket onto here and then open this window keep in mind that there are rubber grommets that go around here if you could keep them clean and uh, not lose them they're gonna go back on there to seal because when I took off this bottom one uh, some oil dripped out uh, but as you turn this you'll see a notch that's marked. I don't know if you can see it right now, but it'll line up with this top line. And then uh, you've got top dead center. Now, let's go ahead, give me a minute to get all this stuff out of the way. We'll cut to the meat. I'll take the tank off and get this out of the way and uh, get this open and I'll show you what's inside. I'll be right back. A few moments later. All right, we got the tank off. Okay, there we go, the tank is off. You can see those rubberized places for the little clamps for vibration. Uh, I did remove, I believe this is EGR, I removed this hose and this to clear up some more space in here. And now I need to take these two pieces off. One on this side, and hopefully the one on this side should give me enough clearance to, uh, to take this off. I hope. Uh, and then I need to remove this over here. All right, uh, this is eight mil. And uh, the tank bolt, by the way, was uh, 10 mil. The Magic 10, everything is 10 here. Which is cool because that's my lucky number. Anyways, let me get all this stuff off and then let's see how far we get from there. A few moments later. Okay, problem. I have taken the cover off Mostly. <laughs> uh, I got the four bolts that 
go on the cover, but there's not enough clearance for the cover to come completely off. I had to put a paper towel under the edge here and then kind of just pry a little around. I didn't want to mess the finish up. Um, and then I grabbed it, kind of wiggled it a little bit. Uh, I wanted to keep the seal intact. Okay, so <laughs> if you look, when you take the lid off, I even had to bend this a little bit just to get it to come off this much. It won't, it will not come off. It's the, too tight inside. But, if you look, if you look, I can still access my intake valve. I got it, it rocks a little bit. But if you look, here's my point of weight. Let me go ahead and give it an adjustment and I'll be right back. Okay, I was able to get the, the uh, feeler gauge to 0.08 and get it to just drag across. It'll fit and it drags just, oops, sorry, fits and drags just barely. Right? Okay, so, but I had to take this set nut all the way off so that I could turn it correctly because I, I don't have enough clearance to put pliers or anything to turn that and I don't have the special wrench that you need to do that. I did drop the bolt and it got stuck behind the spring. Please, please be careful because if you drop the bolt it'll go all the way into your engine and you're just, yeah, you're going to have to have someone go in there to take it all out. So, a recommendation, I took this and I stuck it and jammed it around the lining in here. Make sure it's a clean rag though, no dust and dirt. And I jammed it there. So if I did drop it, it wouldn't roll into the, into the into down into there where I couldn't get it. Uh, I don't have the ability to adjust the exhaust side, but I checked it and the, the clearance is good. So it must have been my intake set that's messed up. All right, so this is, I guess, kind of the hack job of putting this thing, uh, doing a valve job. But uh, just keep in mind that this, if your vehicle is warrantied and they find out you did this, it is void of warranty. Um, I guess I just voided my warranty unless they find out, and more than likely they'll find out because they're a subscriber to my channel. <laughs> that sucks. But uh, I'm doing this so that everybody knows what to expect if they're doing it themselves or people who don't have a dealership near them and they want to get it taken care of and don't want to pay the $180. Um, I'm thinking now that $180 would have been a good price. There's a lot of effort to get this taken care of to get it right. But if you watch this video and, and you do a little bit of research in your time, you should be able to get it right. So let me go ahead and put this back together and let's see what we get. Okay, well, I got her back together to the point where I can start her. The tank, the fuel line, the EGR, this, this, the bolt heads back on. Closed all these up. Uh, cleaned around the motor. Cleaned my chain eventually. Anyways, um, got everything reconnected and bolted back on where it's supposed to be. Uh, minus the plastics and the seat and the signal lights. And this is what I get now. Let's turn her on. I need to do my idle, idle screw. But there's no more weird. It's smooth now. And I can start it and let it run without dying. One of my major symptoms was I could start it and it would go da -da -da -da, and it pop and go and then die. Um, apparently, my intake side 
was way too loose. I specced it out and it seems to be good now. So, you know, hey, um, if you have any questions, be sure to post it in the comments. Um, I hope I was detailed enough as to what I did. Um, and I hope I also was specific saying that this is a, uh, something that is, um, going to void your warranty. I remember there's a two year warranty on this thing. Uh, I don't mind, uh, for the sake of a video, but anyways, um, if you have any questions, leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to make plenty more stuff as I go along with this thing, uh, with other bikes too. I got my ruckus and, uh, I'm hopefully if my wife will let me, I'll get other bikes in the future. Anyways, have a good day, and I'll see you next time.